Hello, this is front office sports reporter Colin Salau. And today I'm joined by 14-year NBA veteran, NBA champion, and the CEO of All The Smoke Productions. Welcome, Matt Barnes. How are you doing? Good, Colin. Thank you for having me. Of course, Matt. You know, it's great to talk to you. I know you are a busy man, though, uh, because you have a book with All The Smoke launching on October 8th. You got tours in New York on the 7th and Philadelphia on the 9th. Um, So a lot going on with you guys in your five-year anniversary of All the Smoke. But I was reading before this that, you know, being an on-air personality wasn't your goal coming out of of the NBA, right? And now you became that and had a media company. Can you tell me what the plan was originally and how you got here? Man, I didn't know what the plan was, to be honest, uh, but it never, you know, while I was playing, I never said, hey, I want to go into media or, hey, I want to do this on the media side. It, it, it never crossed my mind, to be honest with you. Um, you know, my goal was I've been a cannabis advocate for a long time, and my first goal was to um, be a shield for current NBA players um, and, 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 and really try to push the line with cannabis, uh, can, uh, cannabis being legalized in the NBA. Uh, you know, myself, Al Harrington, took several flights out to New York to talk to the PA and, and, and talk to the NBA. And, you know, um, you know, I'm sure we weren't the only, but finally on their own, they kind of started, you know, doing research. And, you know, lo and behold, in the bubble, everything kind of came to fruition and they stopped testing. So that was kind of my first goal. I had a friend of mine that, you know, used to tell me, hey, you were so well spoken in your interviews. You should think about media. And I'm just like, no, nah, I just again, like, you know. Back when I played, um, there was just, I think there was a lot of tension between players and media. Um, and, you know, the person was telling me, it's like, oh, you know, you, can, you, you guys can be a part of the way to help change that. If there's stuff you don't like, you know, get into it and change it. And, you know, the more and more she kept telling me that, the more and more I'm just like, maybe I will. Uh, so I gave it a try. Uh, I was working ESPN and Fox and I loved it. You know what I mean? The fact that we could sit down and talk sports on television and and really give educated opinions and, and, and let you know fans know what players are really thinking. It, it, it just all seemed really entertaining to me. And the better I started getting, the more money I started getting from it. I'm just like, oh man, well maybe this is my second act. So it kind of just came from almost trial and error. You know, me not necessarily wanting to do it, but taking a chance on it, being pretty good and then continuing to hone my craft and getting better at it. And you know, the more we did that, the more opportunities that came about. Um, You know, through that is how all the smoke kind of came about. You know, Stack and I were both doing respective work for ESPN and Fox and in our comments, you know, you guys are so real. You guys are so this. You guys are so that you guys need to do something together. And I'm just like, well, shoot, let's do something together. I don't know really know what we can do together, but let's do it. And I pitched him the podcast. And although I didn't really know what a podcast was, I just knew it was a little bit more free. Uh, you know, Fox and ESPN, you got to kind of walk that fine line. But, you know, on the podcast, I figured we might be able to smoke, maybe even drink and really kind of just have like a man cave type conversation. Fast forward, I met with Brian Daly from Showtime on just a cold pitch, 30 minute pitch. We took a couple of shots and he 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 was he was with it. And, you know, here we are. Literally, I think we're on. Is it this week is our five year anniversary or next week? Yeah. The eighth. The day our book comes out is our next week is our as our five year anniversary. So to think, you know what we started, how far we've came, and we still have so far to go. I just wouldn't have thought if you would have told me this, you know, when I retired seven years ago that we'd be here. Yeah, thanks for going into the detail there. You know, you talked about how a lot of you wanted to be a shield for athletes. And if I look at the media space now, you see a lot of um, whether former athletes or, or just journalists in general who are branching out and building their own media companies the way that you have. Um, what kind of came into your decision to make all the smoke productions and have you faced any challenges or, or growing, growing pains through that process? Um, I just think, you know, we've always wanted to, we've always been the, 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 the product, you know, whether we're athletes or working for these big, you know, media companies, you know, we've always been kind of the prize and, 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 and it's always been other people kind of getting the credit for it. So, you know, I just thought, you know, with the opportunity to create our own company that we can cut the middleman out. And we can really make a an honest, 
fun business that tells great stories and and treats people the right way you know and it's not to say you don't get treated the right way with the other bigger businesses but it's bigger business you know what i mean so it, it's the business so you know with all the smoke productions i like to be very personable and and you know we have a lot of great talent behind the scenes and then it and it's you know anyone will tell you i'm one of the ceos that are you know on the ground floor with them and you know all ideas are welcome you know we don't hire people to do small little things we hire people to be creative and, and be great at what they're great at because obviously i don't know everything and we don't know everything so you know we just try to create a fun environment and and while we're doing it you know tell passionate stories from you know athletes and, and entertainers and and um musicians and and being able to have you know the stories told in their own words yeah and you know when when i was told that you were launching a book um, you know, I, I thought about Matt Barnes, the player, um, Stack, the player, the the glue guys, the veterans who were, you know, kind of those, um, the, the, the type of guy who would try to get Kobe to flinch on the court. You know, you're, you're that type of guy. I wouldn't think book. I wouldn't think Matt Barnes going to release a book and Stack's going to release a book. So why a book on the, which you release on the 8th? And what's the part of it that you want people to see? Um, I think a, a part of it is, is, is because I think a lot of you aren't alone in your thinking, you know what I mean? We were, um, the bad boys or, or guys that sometimes got in trouble or we weren't the typical people you think about that are going to sit back and write a book. But, you know, when the opportunity from Simon Schuster came, um, to pitch a coffee table book, I'm like, I, I thought like what better way to kind of have our stories live forever. You know, I mean, obviously you can always find them on YouTube, but, you know, to, to, to have a coffee table book, you, you think back to when you were little, you know, coffee table books have always been a big thing, whether in your grandparents' house or at school or wherever you may be, you see a coffee table book, you're like, wow, that, you know, that's dope. So, you know, the opportunity presented itself. And I think we've had such an amazing run and an amazing list of, of guests that have really we've made feel comfortable enough to really kind of let their guard down and tell some of the realest stories they've ever told. You know, my favorite thing on our show is when people's like, Oh, I've never told no one this. I'm like, yes, they feel comfortable. We got them. They're about to share some, you know, some real stuff. So we were able to capture all those moments or a majority of those moments in the book and, 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 and give it to our fans. So again, we're really excited for the opportunity, thankful for the opportunity. And we want to, you know, do all we can to make sure the book does well. All right. So again, that's going to be out on October 8th. That's Tuesday next week. And again, it's your fifth uh, five-year anniversary for All the Smoke, the show. I wanted to touch and, and, and change gears and talk about the media industry that you are now a part of, uh, that you said you've wanted to shield players for. Uh, obviously, the NBA is where you were in for a, for a while, uh, 14 years. Um, you made your money in the NBA, but at the same time, there's this new media rights deal that they just signed. Um, there's a lot of, of changes that are going to happen, right? The NBA is going to be on streaming now. Players are expecting more money. NBC is back. You know, when you heard that new $7 billion a year deal as a former player, but now as a media member yourself, what's your big takeaway from that? First thought was, damn, I wish I wasn't so old. No, I'm kidding. Um, you know, again, I, I think, you know, to your point, I think, sports media but particular basketball media ha has shifted and changed and you're seeing all these different personalities with platforms in the space and you know although we weren't first you know i think while we were right behind knuckleheads um you know we've kind of we're, we're, we're ogs in this space and and it took us a long time and, and a lot of hard work to be a trusted voice in this space so when i see these big new deals I know that's going to be more opportunities for us because, again, I think we've done a pretty good job of, you know, running the show the last five years and, you know, opportunities that presented themselves, um, you know, and we're, and we're thankful for that. But I think with this new deal coming up and these new streamers coming in and the new networks coming in, it's just going to be more opportunities. So I'm definitely excited to continue to kind of hold a standard um, as a trusted voice in this space and a trusted show and looking forward to the opportunities, you know, now that I'm done and in the media that, you know, that, that the new deal that the players got and the media got, you know, will still trickle down um, with opportunities to the former players who are now in the media space. Yeah, and and you mentioned at the start of this interview that you were you started with ESPN as one of your your outlets, and there's a lot of changes right now that's happening with your yeah. former employer, Ad Adrian Wojnarowski, is left. Zach Lowe has been let go. Um, even your former teammate JJ Redick was mm -hmm. there, and then is is now a coach. Um, from a, when you look at it from the outside looking in, how are you? 
uh, what do you see as the changes in the ESPN? How do you feel about those changes? Uh, it's business. It's the business. You know, I was, you know, I, I had a good four, four year run there and, and was just thankful for the opportunity. You know, um, their ESPN is at the top of the top. And although, you know, them and the Foxes, it, the, I think those big pillars and, and big machines will always be there. But you don't have to be on those platforms now to have your voice heard, uh, to, 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 to go viral or to make good money. You know, again, I think that the, the, the tide has shifted. And although although those big you know outlets will always be there, I think the smaller outlets, the smaller platforms, the player driven platforms are, are getting just as much coverage as going just as viral and getting just as many, if not more views. So I think, you know, you're we're seeing a shift in how sports media is being portrayed. And um, I had a blast working there and, and, you know, still have a lot of friends there, but, you know, definitely we're really happy uh, on where we're at and what we've built and where we're going to continue to build. In terms of the content, you, you said that you, you want, you want to be a shield. I'll go back to that again. Mm -hmm. And um, do you think that there's been a shift in the content that since you've been there, or do you see it as kind of similar still? Um, I think uh, on the ESPN side, as far as their content. Yeah. Or, 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 and, and at, at large as well, you can talk just about in general. Yeah. I, I mean, I definitely think there's just more trusted voices in this space now of guys or, 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 or girls, women who have done it, you know what I mean? Before, you know, it was always just these huge outlets reporting on what they see, what they saw and how they think things went. But now you have people that actually know how it went and we're in the mix and we're in these locker rooms and in these games. So I use I put myself in a fan's perspective now, and I'm just like, if I'm gonna pick who or what I'm gonna listen to, um, I want to listen to the person that has the most expertise in that. And if you look at that, it's normally if we're talking sports media, it's gonna be the people who actually played sports at the highest level. You know what I mean? So again, there's you know the Draymonds and and us and and Paul George and Pat Bev and Jeff Teague and Gilbert Arenas and you know there. Quentin Richardson, Q Ma, uh, uh, D Miles. There's a ton of different platforms now, and and, and people are like that. You know, do you look at them as competition? But I don't, because I feel like first of all, the space is big enough for all of us. But I also think we all give a different, unique perspective because all of our journeys were different. You know, we all have you know similar but different friends and 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 and, and different storytelling abilities and. You know, I'm just glad to see that a lot of the people in basketball media now look like me and, and actually played the sport I played. So um, that's where I definitely see the shift and kind of the trends changing. And I have one, one question on that I find fascinating because um, if it's not obvious, I did not play professional basketball for a living, right? Oh, and, really? <laughs> and um, I, I'm curious because you, you're, you've, you've, you have been that shield, right? Um, but when you moved to the media side and you did meet non-athlete journalists, was there something that changed with your interactions with them? Like, I know you have a relationship with like folks like Rachel Nichols and Dan Lebetard. Like, mm -hmm. ha were you able to change your perspective on that as well? Or has it kind of been similar? No, it wasn't, you know, anytime you get a chance to know, so it's not like I dislike anybody in the space. You know, I have a lot of great you know, friends that, you know, you two mentioned too, you know, Stephen A. Smith is someone, you know, I still talk to probably on a monthly basis, just checking in and tapping in. So, you know, I, I think there are, and, and you never want to put a blanket on anything because I think, you know, those people that haven't played still have great perspectives and still do a great job at covering and, and, and doing their job. So you never want to discredit, you know, what they've done or what they've accomplished and in, in, in their, in their, their importance in this space. But at the same time, again, if 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 I'm a fan and I'm, you know, I, I want to find out what's really going on, I want to go to the source. I want the source to tell me. So, again, that doesn't discredit anyone who hasn't played, because, again, I mean, Stephen A. Smith is one of the biggest personalities. And, you know, where he's hearing and, and we're hearing talks of he possibly get a hundred million dollar contract as a media member. I mean, that's absolutely incredible. And when I see that, I applaud it because I know, you know, we're trying to I'm trying to work towards that. And, and as a group. We're trying to work towards that. So, it, it, you know, there's still friendly competition on this side of the game as well, because as the money gets bigger for the game, that means the money's going to get bigger for the media, you know? So right. it's a, it's a great time. It's an exciting time. And I'm glad that we're planning right in the middle of it. Right. Last couple for you. Um, you've had a couple of guests. The W is kind of like growing in an unprecedented way right now. And you've had a couple of guests from the W, you know, Sue Bird, Asia Wilson, Kelsey Plum, just to name a few. Um, 
but there's been a lot of conversation about the media versus the players right now that's in the W, right? And I'm curious what your reaction has been to kind of the growth of the league and then from there, how the relationship between the players and the way that they've been treated by the media has been. Yeah, it's, um, you know, we're, we're actually working on a passion project, my, my company, about the W and the growth of the W. And, you know, anytime there's growth, there's going to be uncomfortable conversations and things about the growth you may not like, you know, but at the end of the day, I think the game is growing um, and, and you don't want to ever discredit who came before, but you, you, you put a big, you know, thanks to the Caitlin Clarks and the Angel Reese's. I think those two particular women came in with brands that at the time were bigger than the WNBA. You know what I mean? They were bigger than the league. And I say that with all due respect because the league has, you know, had a lot of greatness in it. Um, but the way the game is growing, um, it's been incredible. Um, I think they're, uh, do they go back to the drawing board next year after next season? I think uh, they signed their media rights deal. You, you, you mean the media rights deal? Is, is, the, it, is, is it a part of the NBA? It was media part of the rights? NBA's, yeah. It's okay. 220, I believe. that they. Okay, yeah. Out. So, uh, again, you know, the, the attention has shifted. And, 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 you know, in the past, these these W players, once the season over here, have to go, have to go overseas for nine months and, and play. But I, I love the fact that more money is, is coming to these ladies and they're getting more opportunities. There's a new league that just started. I forgot what it's called. Or they're, they're trying to start. Yeah. Unrivaled, yeah. And, and that's going to give, you know, some of the top players opportunities to make more money. So I love where the game is. And, and a part of our uh, story that we're going to do is, you know, I think it's year 28 or is it year 28 for the W? I believe, yeah, I think it's yeah, this so, 20, yeah. Uh, yeah, comparing where the W is at 28 and where the NBA was at 28. And, you know, some would say that the W is ahead of schedule, you know, so I'm definitely happy for these women. I want to continue to um, use our platform to help grow and, and celebrate these women and just give them their flowers. You know what I mean? That the current players and the ones that came before, because, you know, there's a lot of women that, that, that planted the foundation for this game. And, you know, you look at the Comets Big Three winning the first four WNBA championships. Um and all the greatness has come down the pipeline. You look at Asia Wilson will probably go down as one of the greatest players of all time. I think she's the best player in the league right now, but there's just a lot of parody, a lot of competition, and people are starting to learn more about women's basketball. You know, the, 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 the trash talking, the, the, the physicality, the cattiness. Um, I think it's good, you know, but uh, again, as stuff grows, it's not always going to be growth in areas where you want, you know, you've heard Asia will, or excuse me, you've heard, um, Angel Reese come out and, you know, say, you know, there's been a lot of racism towards her from the Caitlin Clark fans. And, you know, so again, there's, there, there you got to take the good with the bad, unfortunately. But I think at the end of the day, the fact that, you know, it, we're talking about it, the fact that it's being covered differently and, and, and more now um, is only good for the game. And, and, and these women are paving the way for the game to continue to grow and get bigger, bigger than it is now. All right. Um, just a la couple of quick uh, rapid fire questions. Um, who's an active athlete that you think you uh, that you could see right now as 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 becoming you know strong in the media game after their careers? Um, I think Draymond Green. I think Draymond is you know someone I got to play with and against for a long time. Already has a platform as a media voice, but I think once he's done playing, he's gonna he's gonna take off. I really like his opinions and and his point of views and his IQ and his intelligence. So I think Draymond will will take off. Uh, you just had an interview release on Monday with Kamala Harris, Vice President Kamala Harris. Um, who's your next like dream interview that you you guys want to have you and Stack? Um, MJ, Obama, Michelle Obama, Dr. Dre, LeBron. That's probably our top five. If you could get MJ, <laughs> uh, he, I don't think he sits down a lot, but you know, maybe you guys would get him. We can even stand if he wants to stand. We don't got to sit down. <laughs> uh, last one. The Athletics played their last game in Oakland, nice. and you you had a, a long, uh, you know, career playing in Oakland. Give me your reactions to what's been happening to the city. It hurts. It sucks. Um, you know, first major city to lose all three pro sports teams. Um, I know that the, the fans there, there, and the economy are, are going to suffer from it. You know, you hear a lot of horror stories from the owner of the A's 
that he didn't really do his job. You know, he was always shortchanging and trying to play money ball and trying to do cheap shit instead of actually pouring into the fan base and pouring into the players. So I saw that say I've been an Ace fan my whole life. We'll definitely miss um, them being in Oakland, but they're actually going to make a pit stop in my hometown of Sacramento. So I'm looking forward to being able to go out there and catch um, some A's games. But, you know, I just, you know, my, my heart goes out to the city of Oakland um, with, you know, the fact that they've lost three sports teams in the last, you know, five years is 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 unbelievable. And um, I hope, you know, the good Lord has some in, uh, some in store for him. All right. Thanks for, for all of that, Matt. Uh, that was Matt Barnes joining Front Off Sports today. He is... Uh, the CEO of All The Smoke Productions, and they're launching a book uh, on October 8th and going on tour in New York and Philadelphia on the 7th and the 9th. Thank you, Matt, for joining us. Thanks, buddy. Have a good one.